Okay, so we just finished uh, adding paths together in vector on our logo. One thing I did between the last video and this video is I exported my vector as an SVG, which I looked up and it actually stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. What's great about an SVG is you can actually view them on a web browser. So if I use Safari and I zoom in, you'll see that my sketch underneath is pixel based and it has the stair steps, but my vector is perfectly clean. Even though it's still made by the pixels of my computer screen, the web browser can show that it is scalable, that it can be as big as I want it to be and it will always be perfectly clean. And you see how that cleans up all of those those lines of my sketch. So no matter how perfectly um, precise I was with drafting tools, with ruling pins and triangles and rulers, if I were to, to ink this logo, I couldn't get it as clean as the vector can make it, especially when it gets to curves, because the curves when scanned into the computer would always be made out of square pixels but as a vector, they are perfect curves. Now, are they absolutely perfect? Notice there's like a little blip there. There's always, you know, little imperfections. There's a little jog there, but it's getting pretty darn close. It's nice and smooth. Now, the nice thing about exporting it as an SVG is that I was able to name the file. So I named it SP21, Carl Assignment Black Shapes Vector. Now, I'm actually going to, let's see, create a new file. And then I'm going to upload my SVG. This is so it doesn't keep saving it as an untitled to my downloads. So if I open that SVG, within it, all that vector information is there. Come on, upload it. And I'm not sure why that isn't working. But what does work is if I just, if I have Illustrator, I can also move an SVG file between Illustrator and, and other vector imaging programs, right? So exporting as an SVG is definitely better than rasterizing it, which would be exporting it as a JPEG or as a PNG. All right, so here we see it in Illustrator. And we can see all of those different paths here that are being used, including the sketch underneath. So it's a good idea to save your work as an SVG instead of only keeping it online. It's good standard digital practice to always keep something saved in two places. All right, so I combined shapes together. So now I have pretty clean project. I'll stretch this to make it a little bit bigger. And if I look on my layers, I have a little nose piece, I have a mouth piece, I have this little droplet and then I have a really big complicated path that has uh, 
paths that were added to it and shapes that were subtracted from it. So this is what's called a compound path. And then I have my little wing, and then I have my sketch underneath. All right, now I still need my sketch underneath, but I can lock basically everything except for what I want to edit. And so let's work with the nose piece. That's where I left off on the last video. I was showing how to draw it with the pen tool, right? And here I used a border, and I can actually combine a border with a fill, or I can just have one or the other. So that's one way I can get that shape. And then, of course, I can modify it with the pen tool. Or I can double click on it and modify it just by dragging anchor points around and smoothing them and softening corners. And so vectors are all about the anchors and knowing how to manipulate them and how to soften them when you need to. So pulling the corner out, that's the little inside anchor, that can really help to soften when you have little blips. But it can also give you little micro curve variations. Oops, that can be annoying. Let me zoom in again. Yes. When you when you look at mine, uh for some reason, even though I turned border off on those shapes, mm -hmm. when I was playing around with those curvatures, it kept giving me little lines, little frays coming off of uh, So yeah, if you double click it to see the anchors you probably still have the border on on some path somewhere. And if they're open paths, you'll always have a hard edge on that. So it's just, it's kind of understanding all the different things that are layering up to give the image. But it would be interesting to see, and I'm, I'm happy to share your screen and to kind of try to diagnose that. But th these are the headaches of using the pin tool, but also the the advantages of it, right? Because I can always add a new anchor as well. To even have a little bit more flexibility. But you'll notice the disadvantage of it is nothing is perfectly regular. Which honestly I kind of like. So for my design that might be the shape I want. But if you want something really regular, you can use one of the shape tools, right? And so if I do a rounded rectangle tool, which we haven't used, and then I double click it to get the anchor points, and I click at the middle and add an anchor point, I can very precisely bend it and keep everything in line. And then if I wanna change those to curves, I have two options, right? I can use the round the corner tool, which works really well. Or I can double click and change the anchor point to a curve and then adjust that way. So if you want absolute symmetry, it's very common in logos to try to do things that look very, very uniform. That's kind of a vector program strength. Then that's an opportunity you have. And then of course I can rotate it, I can stretch it, I can't warp it, but I can do that with the anchor points, right? So once I've stretched it, 
I can double click it. I should be able to. Let's see. I'm going to keep getting off the right path. Come on. This sometimes happens with vectors. You want to kind of isolate the thing you want to affect. So why does it keep moving my... That is bizarre. Shouldn't be able to do that. Everything else is locked. Hmm. Strange. But you can use your arrow keys to move. <laughs> and it's just not, yeah, not working the way I want. There we go. Finally, I get my rotation and my scale. And you can work on it that way and try to edit it. So it's not the worst thing in the world if you have to do something twice, if you have to uh, try in different ways to get what you want. This is all about problem solving. Remember, when you're playing with curves, you can hold down Command and isolate one side from the other side. All right, so now <clears throat> I've done the big black cutout shapes, but I've left out the inside of the, the glasses. So now I need to do some more you know, work on those. And to be able to see it clearly, I'm going to take down the opacity and make sure my sketch is turned on underneath and locked. I'm trying to get my computer to keep up with me here. Maybe I'm going to try exporting it. <laughs> as an SVG. Because what's next is I'm going to be cutting out the shapes for the glasses. But I need my sketch to appear. And it has disappeared. Hmm. Oh, because, well, let's see. No, my opac opacity is visible. So what am I going to try to do? I'm going to try to reopen vector.com. You get to see technical difficulties on browser-based freeware in real time. And I downloaded my progress. You can see it's downloaded there. Because it never did open up my last SVG, this is a new SVG that I can move into my folder. But it should also remember it in my history. You know, just edited seconds ago. Yeah, very strange. I'm not sure why the sketch isn't showing up. So what I can do is bring in the sketch again.
And it's this one, it's the orange one. 